Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic geometry and trigonometry? Well, if you have a pretty good understanding of basic geometry and trigonometry, you should be able to solve this problem right here pretty easily without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We have a right triangle with uh, vertices A, C, and B. And this length of the triangle, uh, A to C, is 3. And we're looking for this length right here, B, C. All right, so that is the question, how far or what's this distance, B, C? But we're being told that if the sine of angle B, so this is angle B right here, so if the sine of angle B is equal to 3 fourths, how far is B to C? So you're going to have to use all the information in this problem, and you do not need a calculator to figure this thing out. All right, but uh, this is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 5, B is the square root of 7, C is 6, and D is the square root of 10. All right, so the only rule here, again, is no calculators. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I will solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. You're going to have to use all the information uh, given to figure it out. But we have a right triangle, and from here to here, this is 3, and we're looking for this distance, BC. And the sine of angle B, and this is angle B right there, is equal to 3 over 4. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is B, the square root of 7. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of basic right triangle trigonometry and some uh, basic geometry. And we're going to need a, a few things for this particular problem, uh, one of which is the Pythagorean theorem. So that's A squared plus uh, B squared is equal to C squared. So this is kind of the geometry aspect, but we're going to need to use some trigonometry because we have this lovely sign over here. Now, for those of you that uh, never studied trigonometry, stick with me uh, because you're going to learn something here. Trigonometry, or at least basic right angle trigonometry, is not that difficult. And this would be a kind of nice introduction. But if you ever wondered what these buttons uh, mean on your calculator, S-I-N, C-O-S and T-A-N. Well, these are what we call trigonometric functions. So this right here is not a sin. Okay, it's not a sin to do math. Some of you might be saying, yes, indeed, that's what it means, Mr. Two Math Man. No, no, no. This is the sine. We actually spell it with the E. But this is the sine, cosine, and tangent. So uh, let's go ahead and put this all together and figure out the solution. Again, we're not going to use a calculator. All right, so in order to do this problem, uh, you need to understand what the sine of an angle is. And uh, if you don't know what the sine of uh, the sine of an angle is, well, you're going to be kind of uh, totally clueless. But no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and explain this to you right now. But this is a multiple choice question. And let's suppose you're like, uh, you know, I don't really know what the sine of an angle is. Matter of fact, I'm totally lost here. What should you do? Well, if you're saying to yourself, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to guess, and I'm saying that is perfect because that's exactly what you should do. Never, ever leave a uh, question, especially a multiple choice question, blank on any exam unless you're going to uh, you know, get penalized for the wrong answer. And that can be the case for some exams like the SAT or ACT. But in general, you're not going to be penalized. You got a one out of four chance. So, you know, you know, take a look at the answers. Be like, hey, this looks pretty good. Yes, that's a good choice. Unfortunately, that's wrong. So the only way to really figure out the answer is to do the math. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. And again, if you, um, you know, kind of forgot uh, the trigonometry that you may have learned 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 
or maybe you never even learned trigonometry uh, you know, before, again, this would be a nice introduction. Okay, so the problem again is we're looking for uh, BC. That's what this means, uh, this notation. What is the length of B to C? And the only information that we have is that from A to C, well, that's three, and we're being told once again that the sine of this angle, angle B, is equal to three over four, three fourths. All right, so what is the sine? What does this mean? Well, we're going to have to figure this out in order to solve this problem. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I know if I take the sine of an angle like 70 degrees, I can plug that into my calculator and get a decimal or get some sort of value for it, and you would be totally correct. But again, we're not going to use our calculator. Uh, so we're just going to have to uh, have a pretty good understanding of what the sine uh, means. So let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so the sine, uh, sine, let me write this again, sine, and these are buttons on our calculators, our scientific calculators, sine, cosine, and tangent. These things right here are referred to as trigonometric ratios, okay, trigonometric ratios. So a ratio is effectively a fraction, right? So we're talking about fractions here, all right, sine, cosine, and tangent. And now the best part of this video is I get to say this funny little phrase right here. And let me go ahead and tell you the phrase and then we'll talk about what it means. So it is so ka toa, so ka toa. Now at this point, some of you might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you definitely lost your mind. Now you're talking another language to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, stick with me for a second. This is just a cool little memory phrase so you can learn these trigonometric functions, all right? These trigonometric uh, ratios. All right, so ka toa. Now we're gonna spell that S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -A. Now this is going to be the key for us to understand some uh, basic right angle trigonometry. But let's go ahead and understand uh, these little uh, letters here, what they mean. So S is going to uh, stand for the sine, C is going to uh, represent the cosine, and T is going to be the tangent. Well, you can see here we have O, H, and A, right? These other letters. What does these mean? Well, let me go ahead and tell you uh, what those mean uh, right now, and then we'll put this all together. All right, so when we have a right triangle, okay, or any triangle at that, when we're looking at a particular angle, so in this case, we're looking at angle B, okay? So from the reference point of angle B, we have three sides to a right triangle, okay? And we're going to stick with the right triangle here. Now, this means that this angle is 90 degrees. Now, the longest side of any right triangle, okay, is called the hypotenuse. That's H. So if you were guessing, oh, maybe that's what the H stands for, well, you would be perfectly right. So the longest side of any right triangle is H. So we're going to label it H, and it's always opposite uh, the 90-degree uh, angle. Okay, the right angle is always opposite, but it's pretty easy to tell because it's the longest leg. All right, now we have these other legs of the triangle, O and H. So O stands for opposite, and A stands for adjacent. So from the reference of uh, the reference point of angle B, what is the opposite side? Okay, well we have to look opposite away from angle B. So this side right here is the opposite side. Okay, now A is adjacent and that word adjacent means next to. So this side right here of the triangle is the adjacent side to angle B. Okay, all right, so uh, let me go ahead and clear this away again so you can kind of think about this. All right, so now it's really important that you understand that these um, uh, opposite and adjacent can change because let's suppose we're talking about angle A. So angle A, what is the opposite side for angle A? Well, it would be down here, okay? The adjacent side would be right here, okay? So the adjacent is always next to the angle. So for, again, for angle B right here, this is the adjacent, which means next to, and then this is the opposite side. Again, H is always the hypotenuse or longest side of a right triangle. Okay, so if you understand all this, then we could put this together and figure out these trigonometric functions. Okay, so back to our cool little phrase, so katoa. So this is a mnemonic, a little memory aid that will um, allow you to remember the correct ratio for the sine, cosine, and tangent when we have a right triangle problem. Okay, so the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So, so S-O-H. 
So the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's where the so comes in, OH. And the cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, so here is our trigonometric ratios. Again, ratios indicate a fraction. And we are talking about the angle. So we're talking about the sine of some angle is equal, uh, in a uh, right triangle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And uh, we have the cosine and tangent with their respective uh, formulas. Okay, so let's put this together now in our problem. And it's going to become apparent that, wow, we can actually figure this thing out. Okay, so remember, we're being told that if the sine of angle B is equal to 3 over 4. Okay, so here is angle B, and we have of angle B is equal to 3 over 4. So what is the sine of angle B? Well, what is the sine in general? Well, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that is what the sine is equal to, and we know that the sine of angle B here is equal to 3 over 4, right? So that was kind of given information. So the sine of angle B is equal to 3 over 4, and the sine is the same thing as the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, what is the opposite? Well, the opposite is 3, and that makes sense because that is this leg of the triangle. But what is the denominator down here? 4, well, that represents the hypotenuse. So this leg right here of the triangle is 4. Okay, so now we have 2 out of the three lengths in a right triangle. And if you know the Pythagorean theorem, uh, you can easily figure out what this side is equal to. And uh, this is really the key to figuring out uh, the solution to this problem is to understand this uh, basic right angle trigonometry. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just don't you love the way I kind of you know squeeze that in? Well, I have to stop because I need your support, right? And um, it's that important for me to stop, you know, all my videos and say, hey, listen, I need your uh, support to continue to make as many math videos as possible. Now, I've been on YouTube for like 10 plus years. Right now, I have like, I think, over 3,000 videos. I don't even count because I post so much. And uh, I post so many videos because I really try to cover, uh, you know, a wide spectrum of math from basic math all the way to advanced math, uh, calculus, and everything in between. So that is a lot of uh, topics to cover. But the whole kind of uh, mission uh, for my YouTube channel is to try to make math clear and understandable, and most importantly, to offer encouragement to people to never, ever, ever give up on themselves uh, in terms of their ability to learn math. The number one thing where people go wrong in terms of uh, struggling with math is they get it stuck in their head and this is, again, the number one prompt for those of you that might be having a real tough time with math is, well, you start doubting your, your abilities. You're like, eh, I don't know if I'm smart enough, you know, um, just, you know, math's not my thing. And you just start, you know, like, you know, your hair starts standing up. Well, listen, I'm telling you the first place that you need to start if you truly want to be successful in math is changing your mindset, okay? I'm telling you right now, you're absolutely capable of being successful in math. So if you're constantly thinking these thoughts, though, like, well, you know what, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at math, it doesn't make a difference if your teacher over here is trying to teach you and you're over here saying, I'm bad at math, I'm, that's all you're thinking, no matter how good the instruction is, it's just going to bounce right off of you because your mindset is not ready to kind of learn, all right? So I'm telling you, as someone who's uh, truly, and I'm not patronizing you, by the way, I'm telling you the honest truth, you can be successful in math. And that's a big part of the message uh, that I like to try to get out there. But anyways, uh, I do need your help because uh, YouTube really does count how many people subscribe to my channel. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. I'd really appreciate that. And thanks for, for giving me a little bit of time to explain, you know, uh, why I do what I do. And now let's get back to this problem because it should be pretty straightforward now. All right, so we have uh, the information. We know what the sine of angle B is equal to. That was equal to 3 over 4. And because we understand sine as a trigonometric ratio, we have this leg and this length of a uh, this this side and this side of a right triangle and uh, so anytime you have a right triangle you should always be thinking the Pythagorean theorem like yeah oh, you know, I'm probably gonna end up using this thing and uh, by the way if you need help with basic right angle trigonometry or the Pythagorean theorem triangles I teach this in two of my courses all right actually three 
So the first is my geometry course. You will get some basic trigonometry in there. Uh, of course, in my pre-calculus course, I teach advanced trigonometry and other advanced uh, topics. And for those of you that might just want to kind of rebuild your math skills, well, check out my math skills rebuild a course. I cover this stuff as well. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what BC is. And BC is this side of the right triangle, but we'll call it uh, X for just the purposes of figuring out uh, this uh, length uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Again, the Pythagorean theorem, C is always the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side of a right triangle. So that is four. Okay, so this is what C is equal to. And then A or B can be equal to uh, uh, three. So we'll just let A equal to three. It doesn't make a difference. So we have uh, three squared or A squared, which is three squared plus X squared. This side right here is equal to four squared which is our C squared. So this is going to be three squared, which is nine plus X squared is equal to 16. Now we can simply subtract nine from both sides of the equation and you get X squared is equal to seven. And we have this lovely quadratic equation, which we can solve by taking the square root of both sides. So X is equal to positive or negative square root of seven. All right. So again, we're not using a calculator here and we're going to disregard the negative um, value on this solution because we are talking about positive distances. So BC would be equal to the positive square root of seven. All right, so hopefully those of you out there that never really seen uh, trigonometry, maybe you never learned it before, you know, you might be thinking back to maybe your high school years or college years, and maybe you had no need to learn trigonometry. You might be like, hey, Mr. T2 Math Man, man you know, I just wasn't interested. Well, I totally get that, but maybe your interests uh, have changed, but maybe some of you out there are actually taking a math class right now, and you might be saying, hey, I'm not interested, but I got to learn this stuff so I can pass my class. I totally get it. You know, I'm not going to be one of these people and saying, hey, you should love math, right? You know, uh, enjoy the, uh, the subject. I hope you do. I mean, think, I personally think math is pretty cool, but whether you like math or not, having math skills is incredibly um uh, you know, valuable, right? Because what do you do when you practice uh, solving math problems? Well, you're using your analytical, critical thinking skills. So you're just getting better at problem solving. And of course, that can really have a lot of positive impact in a lot of different areas of your life. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.